welcome to the Epic Vision Zone. Our goal with this show and company is to bring you trailblazing women from around the globe to share their ideas, their knowledge, and inspiration to help you transform your dreams into epic success. Today, we're introducing epic female entrepreneur, Michelle Mallow, known as a force of nature. Michelle is a mission-driven change agent with a passion and purpose rooted in the role of a mindset shifter. Understanding that people are only as strong as their mindset, Michelle leverages her leadership skills to bring out the best in those she serves. As a corporate consultant, her ability to consistently return brands to their iconic status earned her the moniker of the change CEO. As a coach and world-renowned motivational speaker, author, and mentor, Michelle empowers clients to become the experts in their own lives, to embrace change as an opportunity, and build their own brand personality, which she says is the golden key to a personal and professional freedom. She is a forward thinker whose coaching style is considered by clients as part badass and part handholder. As a natural connector, she knows that one introduction to the right person can transform a life. Welcome, Michelle Malo. So great to see you today. Oh, so great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. My first question, and what a bio you have. Oh my gosh, the change CEO, mindset shifter. I love it. Um, you came from the boardroom and into entrepreneurship. Tell our audience a little bit about that journey. Oh, I would be honored to, because it was quite the journey. If you look at my background, it's it's like, wow, you went from corporate to personal trainer to a wellness company and to the change CEO. So what I like to tell everyone is, is you really have to dig deep into what your passion is. And a little bit about that background is I did the traditional go to school, you get your master's degree, you go to corporate. And then I was climbing the corporate ladder, just couldn't figure out why I wasn't happy. Even though I enjoyed doing marketing for Kellogg's and Kraft and Barilla Pasta, got to meet tremendous people. But really where the struggle for me was, is that at one point I was over 310 pounds at 28 years old. I swear, I was the sickest 28 year old you would ever meet. So when I decided that enough was enough and had to make some changes, I lost over 170 pounds. And I thought this is how I can actually help other women and my righteous brothers to get back to their best self. Because no matter how much pasta or how many hot dogs you sell, and again, when you're the big girl in the food industry, it makes it even that much harder. I decided that that's where I needed to leave to be my own boss so that I could truly make a difference in individual lives. And then that just has sprouted from there because as you can see, I'm always changing and that's where the change CEO came to play. I love it. I love it. And I like what you're saying in the sense that we might not always find the path that we're supposed to be on right away, as in your story and your journey, but just keep going you know, the, 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 um, I guess it is just don't lose your faith in that something will unfold and you will completely resonate and be in alignment with it. So I love that, that that's, that shows commitment and endurance, but just, uh, the fact that we want to keep going no matter what and you shared with me a really interesting metaphor, <clears throat> excuse me. It was called the sand metaphor and it was a ex beautiful expression. Share that with our audience. Absolutely. Now, this is as part of the entrepreneurial journey. I truly believe that you have to have great mentors and people in your life because this is a journey. It's never ending. It's always changing. And I had a great mentor, actually still have, um, Dr. Greg Reed. And he told me the story when I first started working with him because I was trying to do everything. And he said, you have to take a look at what's called the sand. Because you can grab the sand and hold it as tight as you can and hold on to every single particle in your hand, not letting anything go where your hand becomes red and raw, but you can't get anything with it. So what you need to do is literally let go of your hand and just let things fall out. 
because what falls out isn't serving you. And what's left is this beautiful, beautiful thing that you can start to build your foundation or your sandcastle with. So again, don't hold on so tight to an idea. Be open and willing to let those fingers go and let go of what needs uh, to be gone and holding on to what's dear that you can then start to build from. Mm, I love it. It's so, vi <clears throat> excuse me, visual as well. And now what going into the change CEO, which we've mentioned a couple of times, you, you just touched on that briefly, how you came into that title, maybe just extrapolate that a little. 100%. So the entrepreneurial journey and God bless anyone who's on it, <laughs> because it's always changing, shaking. It'll shake you to your core because when you're in corporate America, like I was, you had a paycheck every week, you had benefits, you knew when you were traveling, when there was vacation. In the entrepreneurial role, you don't have that clear of a day. Things can happen, things change, and you have to be able to go with it. Change. And that's where it came from. Because I'm going to tell you, going from the health and wellness business and then finding that most of the people I was working with, I was helping them with their business plans and, and their career changes and all these things. And then as I traveled the world doing speaking and uh, writing books and things like that with fellow wonderful authors, I came to realize that the only constant in everything I did was change. And there was no fear. There was no, there was no anything. It was just always busting through walls. People called me like, where's Waldo? Where's Michelle today? Because I was always on a plane, in a car, talking to people, constantly making and changing based on new experiences. And I'll be honest, I struggled mightily to understand what is it that I am? Because clarity is everything being an entrepreneur. If people don't know who you are, how you can help them and what type of uh, what what pain basically or need state that you're going to help them with, you're not, you're going to be a very poor, poor entrepreneur. And, and I'll I, full disclosure, I struggled with that. And then it just all of a sudden hit me. It's all about change. And especially with, you know, the COVID and all these different things, it was, career changes. And, you know, I tell a lot of my clients right now, you know what, the rug has been pulled from you. So buy a new rug. Because that change of scenery, that texture, all of that is something you can do. And that's what I help people through, through that fear, help them break through the wall, but also just to determine what the next destination is, like I did with and rebranding a lot of the different uh, products and services that I worked for in my corporate days. So well put, accept change because change is a constant. It's, it's right. just look at us now today. I mean, it, it never changes. Change never changes. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, it's true. It's true. So true. Thank you. That was uh, very insightful. Now you have, uh, I have entrepreneurial mindset shift. And what was the first mindset shift that you had to make you believe that you could succeed as an entrepreneur? As soon as I decided that I wasn't going to let the fear of money and monetization rule my strategy is when everything changed. Because when you chase money or you chase an idea and you do not let things flow as they will, and you do not come into what I call your natural genius, right? There is something that you do so naturally that you do not realize what that is. Now, everyone else around you knows that that's your realm of genius, but it takes a long time sometimes for you to come into your own and do that. So you just definitely have to, to listen and be willing to ride the wave and listen and learn and let the folks that are working with you listen to them. They're telling you what they need. Don't put mm. your needs and, and what you used to do and, and the way you think it should be, because it's not going to be. And as soon as I accepted that, everything changed. Everything opened up. I moved from Chicago to Arizona because I wanted a new change because I had some personal things going on in my life that was like, you know what? Now that we're coming up on that middle age, wonderful, wonderful identity, it's time to not only change my mindset as to I can do this and I'm going to just flow in my realm of genius and the right people will come. 
but also just realizing that again, sometimes just to change the scenery and to say, all right, universe, what you got for me and let's just go with it. And it, and it's everything and, and fear is nothing but something that's in your mind that you're creating ongoing. Yes, absolutely. You had a challenging mind shift. Um, when we, when we mindset shift, when we talked earlier, uh, what was that? I, I have it as your most challenging mindset shift. And how did you deal with that to overcome it? Um, it took a lot of self-reflection in all honesty and some quiet time and a lot of forgiveness. Because mm -hmm. when there's past mistakes and there's things that <sighs> you feel like you should have controlled and should have done it differently and you didn't. You know, quite honestly, I was in a 20 year marriage and I should say 20 year relationship. And it was very, very challenging. It's it's part of why I'm part of which we'll talk about me a little bit nonprofit I'm involved in and things like that. But when folks that are closest to you do not support you and in fact bring you down, it takes you even longer for you to get into that flow of, of self esteem. Um, because for years, my self-esteem was in, you know, not only being heavy because I, food was like a comfort thing for me. And if I'm going to be honest, maybe a glass or two of wine a little bit too often to try to numb what was going on around me and to also think, oh, it'll get better. I can change him. I can change the circumstances and walking on eggshells for most of, of, of the time I would be at home didn't help, especially when you're in an entrepreneurial space and you're trying to make a go at it. I was pushing so hard to prove myself that I wasn't letting the natural flow of who I was come through. And that was one of the hardest things to take control of not only my personal life, but also my health that was affected because that was a coping mechanism when I would go into my fear state. So and then just picking up everything and moving my entire life, leaving my family and everything to come to Arizona where I'm a little bit closer to the speaking, which will be, is opening up. I shouldn't say, well, I'm going to say is opening up so that we can get a little bit back to normal because I miss people. <laughs> so when you have to move across country in the middle of a pandemic while your health is, is deteriorating and you're not sure now because you can't speak, you're not doing events, now what? Right. Wow. I'm not going to lie. I, I'll be the first one to tell you it was one of the it's been the hardest three years I've ever been through. But boy, oh boy, when you start to accept it and, the, and you accept the universe, and you start manifesting what you are meant to be. It's life changing. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, I love the fact that you think outside the box. Um, that was a beautiful example of doing so because that took a lot of courage and being bold and stepping through your fear. You, uh, as a creative intelligence coach, I love these examples. And this goes back to your work, <clears throat> excuse me, when you were in corporate America. But I just love the fact that you have this ability to see something and go with it. So. I would love for you to share the innovative strategy that you use to rejuvenate Kellogg's Cracker Brands. And the reason I want to bring this up is because of letting people know that thinking way outside the box is not only fun, but it can be very, very, um, uh, it, it can be very profitable and successful. Oh, I, I thank you for asking because honestly, it was. It is probably my most exciting and proud moment in terms of my corporate career, because I, I did a lot of things in, in terms of brand management, category management, and things of, the, of that nature. When I was asked at Kellogg's to take over the, the cracker category, now we are farm to table, fresh food, organic, and now I am set with a category, which was cookies and crackers, that was definitely not in high demand. Uh, what they were telling me to do is, okay, it is a declining uh, category, so we need you to bring it back. And what we're thinking is the cracker basket. We are going to put cracker baskets on every table in America, because with Crafting Kellogg's, I worked with restaurants and everything non-traditional 
that was not within a grocery store. Cracker baskets. Okay, so when I think of cracker baskets, I think of my grandma bringing her purse, taking the basket, throwing them in, and closing it. <laughs> and she'd have crackers for her soup and salad, you know, for, you know, a month. So maybe that's a volume, you know, for us in terms of, of, of a manufacturer, but there's no excitement there. There's no building. So working alongside with my advertising agency, who, again, partners are everything. So mm. we were like, okay, what are we going to do here? Because <laughs> I, I, I won't. And I, I dug my heels in. And that's part of all my entrepreneur friends who have left corporate because I was doing that a lot because <laughs> I just wasn't one to follow the mold. I thought there's got to be a better way. So the idea came, which was called the art of the cracker. So it was to elevate a product, a saltine, think about it, right? A saltine or mm -hmm. any kind of a townhouse cracker, any of those things. It's like, okay, how, what are you going to do with this? So knowing that we had culinary support, we went and, and, we partnered with the Culinary Institute. I actually, people laugh because I was actually a fellow in the Culinary Institute and I can't cook a lick. So I was like, how are you a fellow? It's, I said, it's not, it's not about the prowess of being able to cook. It's about understanding the art of, of culinary and cuisine and how it brings people together to break bread, not only across the table, but across countries and across mm. just any type of difference. It, food is, is everything. Um, just got to do it in moderation, as I know. <laughs> so being able to to take that cracker category and start to make products that not only elevated as a topping, but also as an ingredient. So still fulfill the idea that you needed. we needed to still sell crackers, but now as, as a base for a lot of different recipes and also as sides and toppings for beautiful soup displays and, and not even um, salad bars, but how are the elevated salad and how are you bringing that to fruition? So it was a beautiful, beautiful partnership. And even being able to bring in a higher level, such as Cars Crackers, having to bring them back because they suffered a huge tragedy because they're they're over in uh, the UK and their entire plant burnt down where there were casualties. Oh, and man. I was charged with, okay, now since we kind of came in and have licensing rights, what are we going to do to help them come back? Because this wasn't mm. just about a cracker at this point. This was about an institution that had been around for years and had mm. such a history, but now it had such a personal history. Um, so, so just being able to even bring in those to look at catering and to look at different options to elevate what people could offer at a little bit lower price point so the profitability was there, but it was still elevated so the actual practice for the caterer, the restaurant, even, you know, hospitals and meeting planners and all that were able to do something a little bit different that really looked like they took pride in what they were offering. Right. But we turned that around and, and broke records in terms of what we were able to do with, with that category and completely turned it around. I got so much pushback. <laughs> really? There's so oh my gosh. Oh, so I, would, much, I would think so they'd so much. I, that's crazy. Well, because it was different. So a lot of times that's, that's the point. Right? Exactly. L living life like your hair's on fire. Everyone's like, oh, that's like a, a knee jerk. So it's not a knee jerk. It's the idea that sometimes you got to feel the heat and you got to let go of what's holding you back and just run through the fire and, and just have faith that you're going to come out the other side. Okay. And that was it. You know, once the numbers started coming in and they saw it was working and we were getting PR from it and we were mm -hmm. able to do beautiful shoots within those the magazines like the Food Arts magazine and all of that. That was very popular back when we were doing this. It was it was a ginormous step forward. And the coolest part is that years and years later, they're still using it and <laughs> as a platform and. And they're still working with the Culinary Institute. So even though it's changed, obviously, but the foundation and the idea yes. of something that was a little different for a really tried and true product, a cracker, mm. you know, a cookie, you know, it's exactly is, is how yeah. do we do that? And it's about thinking differently. It's about changing and shifting the mindset. You, again, going through the fire, you got to have faith in yourself and a belief that what you're doing is right. 
with collaboration and listening to learn from the mistakes and the people around you as you collaborate to make something beautiful together. Don't be big headed. <laughs> you you, you got to <laughs> listen and look at the numbers and do all that. But to bring it back and like see something morph and then change with it as trends and, and things and your customers are asking, that's the beautiful part of the fluidity of what can be marketing, what can be product innovation, what can be your entrepreneurial path is knowing that you can't hold, remember that sand? You can't hold it so tight. You can't love an idea so much that you're not willing to go, wow, that's kind of not working. How do I let go a little bit? Get some input, get a mentor, get a coach read, go to workshops, you know, go to virtual events and, and really start to say, hey, there's a spark of an idea, but here's how that's going to evolve to become the fire. Oh, I love that. That is, see, I, I grab on to words. I love that. The spark of an idea to ignite the fire. That's really powerful. That I thank you so much for sharing that story because uh, Michelle That's shared that with me earlier and I just loved it uh, because what you did is you looked at the cracker and you brainstormed, which I love because that's collaborative. Brainstorming is like you said, don't be pig headed, but brainstorming is like throwing everything on the wall and seeing what sticks and you elevated a basic household product that was like, it's a cracker but you looked at it from a different perspective. I mean, I was listening to your story once again and you're saying, but we wanted to elevate it. And I'm thinking, well, how do you elevate a saltine? But anyway, so <laughs> great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. That was, it's a light bulb. It's a light bulb story for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now going into brand um, branding, you say that to your build your own brand to freedom. Uh, and you tell us that what you mean by that is you you have to go into a conscious mindset shift. There's you want to look at value, story, authenticity. Tell us some more about that because brand authenticity and brand to freedom is so powerful, and especially when you're an entrepreneur and you're a solopreneur. This is near and dear to my heart because everybody has a story. And people need to understand what you stand for. And that gives you freedom because what you're doing is bringing out exactly who you are and you are operating, like I said before, into your realm of genius. And I actually, I just got off the phone with one of my clients and he's kind of digging his heels in a little bit because he just wants to go out there and do some things. And he is so dynamic. And he is credible and, and has all these different accolades behind him. But what I want to do, because he's looking at the next stage of his life, is I want people to, when he walks in the room, I want people to know exactly what he stands for and how he can help and serve based on all of his background, based on all of his knowledge. And the fact he's one of the nicest gentlemen I've ever met, and he has that spark too. But if you're sparking all over the place like a sparkler, and you're looking over here and you're looking over there, people aren't sure where to focus. And clarity is everything because a confused mind will never buy. So if you're not able to tell folks in one sentence exactly who you are, why they should listen to you, and how you can help them, and not what they think they need, but what they need that's underneath. Because a lot of times they think that they need a coach and they need to do speaking and they need, it's like, okay, well, let's stop for a second and let's go really, let's go deeper to figure out what that is and what that storyline becomes so that when you're not in the room, that's what becomes your brand because it's what people talk about. Mm -hmm. So that's the authenticity and you want to make sure, you know, when you're not on stage or you're not doing one of these or talking to folks that people are able to, especially your raving fans, because entrepreneurs, that's what you want. You want to have a whole group, a community, a movement of people that if you're not there, they're going to go, oh my goodness, she is achieved the change CEO. Michelle does transition. I had gotten let go of my job and now I started my own business. I, you know, I'm looking to transform my brand, you know, in, in, in marketing and how do I do that? So being able to, to communicate that so clear, it gives you the freedom because now you're not 
being false or fake or phony because now you're free to be you and that freedom is felt by other people because I'm telling you, no matter how many PowerPoints, no matter how, how many spreadsheets you can prove and this is what you should do and here's how you're going to do it, it really does come down to people by people. And now you're going to work with people mm -hmm. that understand you because you were so clear in your intent. And that is where I failed oh, full disclosure for a long time because everyone, I have a lot of people that follow me and they're, yay, yay, rah, 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 and supportive, but they weren't buying because they didn't know what they were buying. You don't just, you know, hey, can I hang out with you? <laughs> You've got to be able to take a pain point away. People are Googling at night because they are at wit's end. Right. Do you come up? And if you come up, that's where the magic happens. And that's where you can really, truly make a difference um, and also make a living at it because that's important too. Because I'm all about serving. I'll do anything for anybody. But at the end of the day, this is still, and I it took me a long time to do this, not give everything away. You have to be able to support yourself so that you're, you come and you show up for other people because mm -hmm. you're not worried about stuff that you may have going on too. So give yourself permission that this is what you do for a living and what you do is help other people become great and find their greatness. Yes, your time is valuable. And, and what I also see in that, Michelle, is that when you have the clarity, when you have the brand, you're, you take hold of your leadership. You become so much mm -hmm. more confident because you know that that's what you represent. And people are then drawn to that leadership because you're right, when you walk into a room, you don't wanna just be the sparkler where you're all over because if you exude that brand person or that brand personality, or you know exactly you're clear on your message and what you stand for, your leadership comes out and people will gravitate towards that. That energy is what they're, and I always say, um, who you seek is seeking you. So yes, Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. Cause, cause you ever notice that if you do a speaking engagement or you go to a networking event and you may not be feeling it, let's just be honest. You're not always going to be 100% on because things have happened or whatever, but that one person in the room that you connected with. Yes. Mm -hmm. One, you, and you might not even know it but they mm -hmm. needed to meet you at that exact moment. And you may have changed their trajectory just based on the conversation you had or the story that you told. So never underestimate showing up, smiling and, and, and chatting and meeting as many people as you can because everyone has a reason for being in that room or in that audience. You're Except right. That. Yes, you're right. And people do buy people. It's funny, there's a saying, People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, <laughs> absolutely. Well, let's go on to a knee jerk reaction. You say life is not a knee jerk reaction. Tell us what you mean by that. So, we are bombarded, bombarded with what we should do so many messages, so many things. We have our family, we have our friends, we have our colleagues, Every everything we do, we're getting input. And again, the reason, thank you, Oprah, my mess is my message, is that I would be reactionary, especially not as much in corporate because I was very confident in what I was doing. But when I first started out in the entrepreneur realm, I was so hell bent on proving myself that if there was something sparkly, like the sparkler thing, you might have got me because I was trying to grasp on because I hadn't taken the time to really understand who I was, what I was offering and how I could honestly help other people with my, my genius or my gift to others. And I was knee jerking. And I'm going to tell you what ends up happening is you spend so much money and you spend so much time in terms of, of personal time. And I, I'll, I'll tell you, there's moments I was in a little bit of a depression because for the simple fact that I would throw money, I, I said, throw money at the wall. That didn't stick. Okay, I'll throw money at that wall. That didn't stick. Oh, I love this group of people. I'm going to be there, you know, carry their banner. And what I had to do is just stop 
and believe in myself and really do what I always have done. I'm a strategist by nature. That's what I've done. That's what I am. My MBA, my international business degrees, all of that was about strategically looking at a situation, looking at all the options, talking and collaborating with other people, coming up with a solution that's going to be something unexpected, but yet has the probability of success. But when it came to myself, what's that? What's that? And, and it, and that's what derailed me for quite a long time. So, so I don't want you to knee jerk, especially folks that I've worked with or her got their, like I said, the rug pulled for their careers in COVID and they may have been laid off. It's a blessing. I want you to look at it as a time that you haven't had, cause we have run for years all the time, taking the kids to school, you know, work, you, you, whatever, whatever it is, you had PTA, whatever it was, you had so much going on and you weren't thinking about anything you want autopilot. And now all of a sudden COVID has changed everything and we had to slow down and you're not knee jerking. You're not just reacting to the, the, oh my gosh, I got, it's, I'm, I'm snack mom today for, for the baseball team or whatever that is. You're able to actually deliberately stop and think about it. So if you have been laid off, think of it this way. What do you truly want to do now? If you loved what you did, that's great. Let's just make sure we package and brand you so people know that that's exactly where you're supposed to be. And now let's look for a company that may be closer to your values or so our mission that you can get behind if they have a nonprofit and a philanthropic, uh, a philanthropy that you can get behind. So, so again, don't feel unworthy and take the first opportunity that comes to you. Knee jerk, knee jerk. I need a job. I'm going to tell you right now, if you, if you work with the right people, if you take the time and do some inner reflection to see exactly what you want, exactly what you want is going to come to you. So please stop doing that because not only does it hurt your knees, especially when you get to be my age, um, <laughs> the knee jerk thing starts to really hurt. Uh, you know, you also have the, the the neck thing too, where you're constantly looking, instead of looking at yourself in the mirror about what you can provide, you're always looking at other people, what other people have. Hey, what are they have for dinner? You know, I changed my order. I want that. Oh. Don't do that. Don't knee jerk. Don't be the, don't be the neck, you know, what everyone else is doing. You are just fine on your own. You are everything that you need right in right here and in your heart. Just follow what I'm telling you, especially my ladies. We know the ick feeling. You get it. Follow it. You get that yeah. ick feeling. Think about that decision. <laughs> think about that decision. Yeah. You take take a pause. And and it we've been allowed to do that in the last year and a bit because of what has happened worldwide. And you're right. I love that you said it's, it's, it's a blessing because we are, we've been on a treadmill forever, you know, and it's, it's uh, it, it, a lot of people are reflecting at this point, but I love that. Don't be the knee jerk. Don't go after the first, uh, you know, sparkle that shines in the, in the darkness because you want to sit and make sure that that's, in alignment with your values. That's something that's very important because most of us don't even reflect on what we value most because we've been too busy looking after our, <laughs> our families and our jobs and our lives and, and whatever we thought you know we were happy doing. But that, I love it. Thank you, that, that knee-jerk reaction. It's a perfect metaphor. Now, three mindset tools. I would love if you could share with our audience three mindset tools that will empower entrepreneurs on their journey to success, because you've already shared so many wonderful uh, metaphors and tips, but maybe there's three in, in, that you have in your in your pocket that that people can use right now. Uh, absolutely, one of the biggest ones, and, and I alluded to it a little bit earlier, is that I really want you to stop and figure out what your realm of genius is. Because again, it's something you do so naturally that you don't even know you're doing it. But I'm going to tell you, when I'm working with folks, like I said, career people, and they are trying to figure out what their next step is. And I said, well, what are you known for? And they generally stop and they think. I said, okay, let me rephrase that. If you're in the office and all of a sudden everybody, there's a problem, there's a fire, they all come to you. 
What is that fire? What is that one thing that you know that you can solve better than anybody else? And by the way, so does everybody else because you're the go-to person. That phone rings at midnight, which is this, one of the scarier things. It's like, holy cow, what's going on? What's wrong? Are you okay? But they're calling you because they know that you can make it okay. Spend some time. Ask friends. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do that. But definitely, because when, when you get there, you'll realize, yep, that's it. I had a woman one time. I was at a speaking. She asked if she could talk to me afterwards for a few minutes. I said, absolutely. And she said, I said, well, what, what is, again, that question, right? What is it that you do? I help people make money. Why? You do the, why? Okay. And that's going to be my second thing. We'll go into what that, that is. But she just, the deeper we got and we started to talk about it, she didn't want to help people make money. She actually had been through a horrible, horrible divorce and she had four kids and, and she was, and she was church going and Christian and she, and finally, when we dug deep enough, she said, I help women get out of relationships and help them rebuild their lives within my church. As soon as she said that out loud, she started to cry. That's it. That's it. And, and she's like, how did you do that in 20 minutes? And I couldn't do that. You know, I said, because it's what you do so naturally. You're a giver and you've been through it. Don't underestimate what you've been through because that experience is everything. So that's the biggest thing is sit down, really talk, whether it's a coach, it's friends. It, you can even do a Facebook poll, as crazy as that sounds, but you'll see trends of what people mm -hmm. will say about you. And once you find that, start to act on it because when you're right there that is when you're in your in your flow as i like to say um yeah. so that's the that's the that's the first one i would talk about the second one is the why factor now you can mm -hmm. dig as deep as you want but i recommend this with someone you truly trust because you're gonna get annoyed I'm just telling you <laughs> yeah because what it and it's been done before but i'm telling you this is some way to really dig deep like that with that lady. So what is it that you do? I help people make money. Why? Then she'll answer. Why? Do it at least seven to 10 layers deep. Because yes. when you have to real, because it'll take a minute. Well, when you actually start to really dig deep, you'll almost feel the emotion start to come out. Because when mm -hmm. you start to feel something, now you're not just doing something like, because that's my life for a long time as a checklist. I have to go to the store, I have to get this project or that. But when that shift happened that I figured out the why, like Mr. Simon talks about, what is your why, mm -hmm. right? But you can really find that out and just dig deep, but have someone who's willing to kind of ha have the shovel for you so that they, they will just keep pushing you to, to dig deeper so that when you feel it, you feel that emotion come through and that's when you can start to create greatness. Yes. And the third mind shift tool I want to talk about is space with grace. Mm -hmm. And I actually want to get emotional about it too, because everyone goes through things and sometimes you feel very alone and you've got people who want and are the best intended to help you. And they have all kinds of ideas of what you should do, but sometimes you just need to do nothing. You need to just stop. And I mean, stop and give yourself space with grace and forgive yourself and give yourself permission to take, I say a hot minute, take a week, sometimes it's a year. I mean, whatever you need to do, because I'm going to tell you, whatever you do in a reactionary mode is only going to add to the stress and anxiety and never come to that full fruition of what you're meant to do to bring you happiness. Because I see people all the time. I'm going to make you happy. Let's take this course, that course. Here's how to make you happy. The only person who can truly make yourself happy is you. So giving yourself and honoring your space and honoring your mindset and where you are in a certain point in your life, it you have to be able to give yourself permission to be there for a minute. Now, I don't want you to stay there. So if you do need to, you know, whatever that is, because you don't want to be somewhere too long because you don't want to get into a rut where you can't get back out. But I do want you to be able, if there's a day that you just can't, or if there's a time that you just need to figure something out, allow yourself that time. 
I'm going to tell you, you're going to come out better on the other end, but just make sure you have someone who's always, and you have friends and people surrounding you that always are going to have that rope to pull you out. If you get a little too deep, you know, cause we, we don't want you staying there way too long. But again, you've got to give yourself permission to be nice to yourself. Watch that self-talk because I'm telling you, the only person really listening to that is yourself. Yeah. And that's uh, <laughs> Those are great. We've got discover your genius reveal your why and at least seven layers deep. And I completely understand what you said when you said you'll get annoyed or the person asking you will, cause I did that with a friend and she was like, what's wrong? You don't understand what I'm saying. I'm like, yeah, but you're saying the same thing. But anyway, that goes on. And yes. the third one, space with grace. We'll put those along with Michelle's bio, um, because those are so powerful. And of course, if you need her help to unpack them, she's just a phone call away, but really, really powerful. Thank you so much for those. Uh, one question, what's next for Michelle? And I'm really curious because you have made a huge change in your life recently, which you just told us more recently, from the Midwest to the Southwest. And I just like to know where your path is headed because I'm so excited for what you offer and um, your journey is, is I think starting anew. Uh, yes, <laughs> and I appreciate that question because forever I felt like the path was always cluttered with different obstacles and I was more concerned with the obstacles than actually seeing and understanding what it is that I wanted to do. So a couple things that I have and always want to, to chat about is I am going to be launching a podcast and it's called Sparking Results. And the idea there is I want to bring people on that have made big changes in their lives and to, to talk through uh, with other entrepreneurs and even other corporate, what well, I call corporate badasses, because again, for a long time, I'm like, I yeah, I survived corporate. I'm like, you know what? I didn't survive anything. Corporate made me very strong and taught me a ton. And the network and the people I met were extraordinary. So, so always take a look at, at what you did, your experiences and where you're going and be able to express them to help other people. So I wanna give um, my network, my contacts, a platform for that. Now, a big thing that I also have going that I would love for folks to get involved in is my big change was again, moving and also getting out of a relationship that wasn't working for me and all that. I'm part of what's called the I Am Enough movement. I'm on their board of directors and we are on a mission to build the Freedom Haven. The Freedom Haven is gonna be an emergency uh, shelter for right now, women and kiddos to make sure they have a safe place to go because with COVID and with everything that's happened, uh, domestic violence numbers have skyrocketed. So I don't want anyone to ever feel like they're domestic violence victims because I felt that a lot of people, you don't want to go into a victim mode, but what you do want to do is, is look at it as a survivor because you can survive anything. And we want to give uh, these folks a, a place that they can go so they can start anew, so they can walk on. And there's going to be a lot of different, we just had a virtual run this past weekend and there's going to be other events forthcoming. Uh, and I also have a book that's going to be releasing here in the next year, which is called How to Lose 185 Pounds in One Day, The Strategies of Letting Things Go One Small Bite at a Time. So, and again, that might change a little bit, but the, that that's the whole idea of that. And then obviously I have my coaching uh, for careers and for branding and, and those different things that are customizable because everyone's in a different place and I want to meet you where you are so that we can talk through it to get you to your next destination. Again, let's get you through that transition because that's what we want you to do and not get stuck in the cog. <laughs> right. Ab absolutely. And is there an offer that you wanted to put forward to the audience, uh, maybe how they can touch base with you or maybe a discovery call, something of that nature that we can put in your bio on the uh, summit directory? Oh, absolutely. I'm a full believer in serving first. So I give away two free sessions oh, because wow. I actually, I don't want you to feel like you're being sold to. I want to mm -hmm. coach you. I want to help you. I want to, more than anything, I want to listen to you. 
okay? So if you go to the mindsetmenu.com, you will be able to sign up. It's called a free appetizer with me because I was in the food industry forever. So I love my it. programs are called the, the they're called the, the success menus, right? So that that is where all these different programs um, are. But the first one's always the mindset menu because it gives me an opportunity to get to know who you are, where you're at, so that I can help get you on the trail. Because one of my biggest <sighs> inspirations is to let folks know, I want you to be inspired to start. Right. It's like when I ran the marathon, not a runner, but I play one on Facebook. OK, so you always want to put your foot at the start line and cross that and get to the end point. Whatever that journey is in between is yours and yours alone. And, and that's what makes it even so great when you do finish uh, cross that finish line. So the idea of the two free sessions is for me to really get an idea of where you are and for you to really talk to me so that we can so I can give away so you have value um, after you chatted. And if you loved it, we can talk, but that's my free offers. Yes, two free 60 minute sessions. And you can sign up right there. And uh, also uh, on there will be a calendar link that you can get right on my calendar immediately. Oh my gosh, Michelle, that is so generous. I, I think everyone needs to take advantage of that. And we will have that information, by the way, in Michelle's bio um, in the summit directory. One last question that I have, because we're here on the Epic Vision Zone and I ask it of every single guest, if your life were an epic story, what would the title be? Emerge. Mm. Because you have to be able to emerge from the darkness, no matter what it is. You have to be able to emerge into your greatness you need to be able to have your voice heard. You need to be able to emerge to the best of your ability to walk into your realm of genius. So emerge everyone at your time. Love it. Maybe that's the title of your new book. You're still working. <laughs> it's, it's a, uh... I want, and we'll get all of that information, just a, a little seed for thought. We want, we'll have all of this information on, um, at the bio under Michelle's bio at the summit directory, where you'll find everything, including her podcast. When does your podcast launch? Uh, we're looking at fall. Okay. Fall. So we may or may not have that, but we will provide you with all the other information, um, including how to get in touch with her. And I want to thank you once again, Michelle, for being here on the Epic Vision Zone on the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. Your insights and your, your inspiration have been absolutely incredible. Uh, and uh, I can't wait for people to connect with you. And also be sure to connect with me on Instagram at Jane Applegath and check out how you can become an epic entrepreneur at janeapplegath.com. This has been the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dream into epic success. Congratulations for signing up for the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. We're bringing you some of the most exciting female entrepreneurs from around the globe to share with you their knowledge, their ideas, their inspiration, and more importantly, their resources to elevate you to prosperity and freedom. And by being here, you're on the cusp of something great, your epic future. I'm Jane Applegath, founder of the Epic Vision Zone and producer of the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. Be sure to get your VIP pass and join me after the summit on June 16th for a very special VIP coaching session where we'll have hot seating, summit Q&A, and a special guest appearance by one of our speakers just for you, where we'll ignite your vision up-level your confidence and set you on the path to your dreams epic success. This is your opportunity calling. It's time to take action. Get your VIP pass now. I can't wait to see you on the other side.